Good. Good morning. This is the New York City Board of Standards and Appeals Public Review Session for August 18, 2014. We'll begin with the special order calendar. Decision items. Item number one, 61152BZ, 3535 24th Street, Queens. Uh, the applicant submitted uh, revised facts and findings, um, and I think uh, there were no outstanding issues. Do we have any questions or comments? Okay. Item number two, 75178 BC, 215 Northern Boulevard, Queens. Uh, any concerns here? I don't know if we had any outstanding issues. Okay. Item number three, 16993 BC, 246 248 West 88th Street, Manhattan. Any concerns? No. They made the correction I asked for in terms of labeling the massage rooms, storage rooms. Great. Item number four, 7211 BC, 101-06, Astoria Boulevard, Queens. We got clarification on the signage, um, and uh, I guess it's going to become a Luke Oil. So any questions or concerns with that? No. Continued hearing items, item number five. 245-32 BC, 123-05, 101st Avenue, Queens. Uh, this item has been adjourned. Item number six, 765-50 BC, 1430-36, Unionport Road, Bronx. Uh, I think at our last hearing, we requested clarification of the presence of an embalming room, and there will be um, some embalming on the property. Uh, the applicant stated that um, uh, they showed the conditions of the parking lot, and I know we had some concerns. Do we, are we satisfied with the submission? Yes, the parking lot has been cleaned, and it's been landscaped along its borders, and so it's fine. Great. Next item. Item number seven, 99784BZ, 798804 Union Street, Brooklyn. We received submissions uh, from the applicant and additional, I guess, some opposition letters. Um, we seem to cover the parking issue, uh, but I think that we were still concerned with uh, the balcony issue at the rear. So um, I would like the, uh, the applicant to speak further about that and whether or not there's the opportunity to either remove the balconies or at best maybe have a Juliet balcony so that we could um, not really impinge on that rear lot line with the balcony. Um, do we have any? comments about that or well I they removed the um, balconies on the second and third floor and I believe that they had to do that because it encroached on the minimum required distance between the two buildings and I'm just wondering if that minimum required distance actually extends to the promulgation of that line right. and that even above the third floor they shouldn't right. be balconies in yeah not not just to the level of where the roof, the, the president uh, street right. Um, and I think um, we did have a question about whether or not uh, the existing bulkhead um, can remain as a permitted obstruction. So I think the applicant needs to speak to that because the use in that bulkhead has actually changed. It's now, I guess, considered residential as opposed to just access um, or um, an elevator um, bulkhead. So um, if they could address that. Anything else? No. Next item. 88, eight, item number eight, 8892 BC, 3007 East Tremont Avenue, the Bronx. Um, the applicant came back uh, with answers at least to um, my questions concerning that triangular area at uh, the side of the diner um, that was included as part of their um, uh, calculated floor area. And uh, we asked the applicant to, to strike the parking lot, and I guess the parking lot has been striped. So uh, uh, do we have any other outstanding issues? I, I know that Commissioner Otley Brown asked about landscaping. Right, I had asked about landscaping along the residential border of that parking lot, and it wasn't done. I'm taking a look, I took a look at the layout of the spaces, and I'm figuring it probably wasn't done because if they took some space from the parking lot to devote it to landscaping, it would probably cramp the movement of the cars because it would lessen the aisle width. Um, if they could just uh, validate that with a yes or no, that would be fine. Great. Um, anything further on that? That's it. Item number nine, 160-00BZ, 24404 Francis Lewis Boulevard, Queens. 
Did we have any further outstanding issues? So no, they took the vacuums and the car wash machine out from the parking spaces. Next. Item number 10, 15207BZ, 8701 Fourth Avenue, Brooklyn. So uh, we had questions, I guess, at the last hearing about um, the legalization of those bathrooms in the cellar and signage as it applied to corner lots. And the applicant submitted a new sign analysis and corrected his compliance sheet, um, as well as a letter from the arch architect documenting the sprinklers. And I know, Commissioner Montanez, you had um, taken issue with whether or not um, the sprinkler, I guess enough sprinkler heads had been provided and whether it was according to code. Right. The prior re resolution states that the PCE was to come into compliance with fire department requirements for full sprinkling. Full. And they've installed six sprinklers scattered in the bathrooms, locker rooms, and at the top of the stairs. And I'm just wondering, is the DOB accepting that as full sprinkler? Understood. Anything further? Next. New cases, item number 11, 25408 BC. 1214 East 15th Street, Brooklyn. So extension to complete um, legalization and construction of an extension of a four-story yeshiva. Um, do we have any questions concerning their application? Nope. Yeah. Next. Item number 12, 6891 BZ, 22315 Union Turnpike, Queens. Again, another extension to complete construction. Um, any concerns here? I just had a minor question about um, the landscaping box on the corner, and it looked from the photos like it was not planted. Do they plan on putting landscaping in that box? Good. Next. Item number 13, 76-12BZ, 148 Norfolk Street, Brooklyn. So um, the application is filed under 7301 and seeks an amendment and modification to a previous grant that we um, gave the applicant uh, for a special permit. Uh, I'm sure that we're going to see some more of these, but the, um, the applicant now must comply with new regulations promulgated um, by the mayor's office and um, through uh, the zoning resolution concerning flood um, construction. And therefore, um, because of his new design to um, be able to comply with that, um, he's not able to use his cellar um, as storage, um, sort of in the, the typical sense as, as we, we know it, and is looking to transfer some of that floor area to the attic space. Um, do we have any questions or, or comments on this? Well, it's generally above what we grant in Manhattan Beach. They're asking for 1.1 FAR. So that's something to consider if um, how much of a cellar space would be permitted in the attic and increasing the FAR along those lines because we've, we've limited it to 1.0. I, I would agree. I think that if they're asking for 1.1, they're going to have to justify that in some way. Right. So um, either give us you know, a listing of of um, homes that are above that, or at least you know make an argument that they sh they deserve it in some way. So I I would agree with that. Um, Commissioner, also, oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, besides the mayor's executive order, there's also new a new portion of the zoning regulation which deals with you know construction in a flood zone. So I don't know if the architect has reviewed that, but usually if the home is going to be more than five feet above curb level you're required to install a visual mitigation measure right. to sort of hide the, a raised planter or, you know, stairs that change direction or a front porch. And they haven't really done that here. I think they should look at that section of the zoning resolution. Okay. And um, I don't see any landscaping compliance on the plans. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Otley Brown? No additional comments. Next. Appeals calendar, decision items, item number 14, 296.13a, 280 Bond Street, Brooklyn. So do we have any further issues or comments to make about this case? We can proceed with decision. Next. Item number 15, 292.14a, 797th Avenue, Manhattan. Any issues with this? 
Continued hearing items, item number 16 and 17, 16612A and 10713A. This is 638 East 11th Street, Manhattan. These items have been adjourned. Item number 18, 11013A, 120 President Street, Brooklyn. And this item has been withdrawn. New cases, item number 19, 300-08A, 3935 27th Street, Queens. So we've got an application to amend the previous resolution, which um, we approved a nine-story hotel with total floor area uh, 24,713 square feet at 4.94 FAR. Um, so the, the applicant is requesting additional time to complete and to get his CO. Um, interestingly, uh, I think that the plans have changed a bit because there is a lot that the applicant has purchased adjacent to this lot, um, to the subject lot. And it's not clear to me whether or not they have actually merged this lot um, into a new zoning lot. And um, I think the ap applicant needs to speak to that because if they have changed the zoning lot, then I think that that new lot comes under our jurisdiction and that um, has not been brought forth to us. So um, it's not clear to me exactly what's happening on that site. It appears they're going to build a structure that um, is connected to the BSA structure. So um, I think we need to get more clarity on that situation. Um, any further comments on this? Well, they gave us a set of amended plans, which I believe are professionally certified. And I was wondering if they have been audited by the Department of Buildings. Also, they have a, a large number of open violations, and I would like them to discuss, you know, what the status of those violations are and if they're actively pursuing getting them removed. And um, I think they're, since the project might have expanded at this point, <laughs> um, if they could give us an updated, you know, project cost. Okay. Commissioner Brown, I, I know you had some concerns about um, uh, serious loss and what they've, right. they've presented to us. They really haven't presented anything to us concerning the serious loss, and it would be great if they could do an analysis of what actually would be lost if they lost the, the right to complete their project. And it seems that if they have possibly added another lot to the zoning lot, that may actually change the entire picture in terms of what actually would be lost because it would be entitled to more because they're adding more space. So they should just address that. Okay. Next. Okay, item number 20, 2314A, 19835 51st Avenue, Queens. Uh, the applicant submitted materials, um, invoices, and such, and receipts and photos showing the state of construction on this. Um, do we have any questions or comments? Um, they gave us a, a, an update, you know, they gave us an updated um, submittal with the total um, tallies for what they have spent, but I didn't see a total project cost to give us an idea of what percentage that is. Um, they originally gave us a packet of information that was very unclear and not very organized in terms of itemizing the actual um, expenses and what was actually paid and what was incurred. And then they did give us an addendum to that, which actually clarified that somewhat. Still, what I would love to have more information on is if they could flesh out their serious loss, not only to show what's lost by uh, what they're allowed to construct under the lesser zoning, but also to show us more detail about what would have to be demolished on the existing home and then rebuilt and how much that would cost and what they would lose. Okay. Good. I don't think I had anything else. Next. Next. Zoning calendar, item decisions, item number 21, 211-12BZ, 164 Coffee Street, Brooklyn. Any issues? Next. Item number two, uh, 22, 311-12BZ, 964 Dean Street, Brooklyn. The applicant revised their drawings and included um, the notes that we had requested and talked about the storage space. 
Um, is there anything else that we need? No. Item number 23, 6513 BZ, 123 Franklin Avenue, Brooklyn. Uh, are we deferring? We're deferring this um, for environmental testing, I believe. Item number 24, 266-13BZ, not 515 East 5th Street, Manhattan. Uh, we will be deferring this case as well. Yes. Item number 25, 277-13BZ, 1769 Fort George Hill, Manhattan. Any uh, comments or questions on this? Next. Item number 26, 299-13BZ, 4299 Highland Boulevard, Staten Island. Any comments? Next. Item number 27, 3-14BZ, 12-22 East 98 East 89th Street, Manhattan. Any comments, questions? Well, just a comment on the, um, the opposition's allegation that you, or concern that you could still build a cellar. I agree with the applicant that um, a 90-day estimate for construction is not reasonable. It would be very risky and take much longer than that. Good. Okay, item number 28, 27-14BZ, 496 Broadway, Manhattan. Um, we're still waiting um, to hear a definitive answer um, from Landmarks. It appears that the C of A has expired. So um, we just need to get clarity on um, their position and whether they need to review this. So we, we may defer, but we'll see what Landmarks has to say. Item, continued hearing items, item number 29, 300-12BZ. 36 West 93rd Street. So um, submission um, by the applicant stating that there is a planned increase of 30 students um, over the course of between four to five years. Um, and the applicant gave us a breakdown of that enrollment and, and what that meant in terms of the traffic study. So do we have any further comment or question on this? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, oh, they did, this was unrelated to that. They did address my question about whether or not there was going to be a child's play area on the 92nd Street side, and they, they stated that no, there wouldn't be, nor would there be one in the middle section of the building, that it would just remain on 93rd Street. Right. Good. Next. Item number 30, 350-12BZ, 532nd Street, Brooklyn. So at the last hearing, um, the board requested that the applicant respond to a couple of our issues, one of which, um, at least for me, is a threshold issue um, concerning possible federal preemption um, under supremacy clause that because this property was disposed of through um, the federal government and through uh, a program of the federal government, that the applicant um, is um, does not necessarily have to come before us in terms of, of the use of the of the um, of the site, um, and that uh, uh, we're looking sort of further into this. And I've asked DOB's opinion because I don't believe that they actually um, looked at this before they um, gave an objection to it. Um, so the the applicant gave us a pretty substantial brief on the preemption issue. Do we have any? comments or questions concerning that particular issue. There are a couple of others, but I'll just wait to, to see what the applicant further has to say and what perhaps DOB has to say. The second issue was um, the character finding in terms of whether or not this was an appropriate site, but also what, uh, I guess, services and whether or not this, this site would um, be sustained by services in the area. Um, do we have any comments or questions on on their response to that? Oh, I, I have a comment about the response because I had originally raised the question about the suitability of putting residential that might possibly have children in an area that was, to me, kind of dangerous in terms of the street condition with the open rail tracks and the badly paved streets and I got a response from their environmental re uh, report that I felt was inappropriate. I asked a question and I think the appropriate response to that question would be either 
we don't feel that this would be a problem because or we are aware that there might be a problem with the condition of the street and we're prepared to make repairs or the, um, the tracks are not being utilized. What I got was um, the notion that these exposed rails would pose a hazard to a population that is served in the armed forces is in our professional opinion preposterous. That does not address anything. I find that kind of insulting. And frankly, I don't know whether or not it's important to talk about whether or not the population is served in the armed forces because people who are physically fit can trip and hurt themselves on, on exposed rails. So I would have preferred a response that really addressed my concern, which is for the safety of the people who are going to be there. I totally agree with you. I, I do believe that that was an inappropriate response. And I would urge the applicant to um, revise that response and be more um, detailed in exactly what um, you had asked him and uh, not to sort of give a, a subjective view uh, of, of the <coughs> issue. So um, I, I think it bears um, review. Uh, I don't think we had other issues other than the preemption and Commissioner Otten Brown's issue. Oh. Okay. Item number 31, 155, 13BZ, 1782, 84 East 28th Street, Brooklyn. I think we are adjourning, but the applicant will appear. Am I correct in, that, in saying that? Item number 32, 185, 13BZ, 97 Franklin Avenue, Brooklyn. So at the last hearing, the board questioned the possible use of the cellar as well as the size of the cellar. And we also had concerns um, about the permitted obstructions as well as financial financials, um, evidence of, of um, value for that accessory cellar for the second and third floor apartments. Um, and we also sought clarification of the lot study. So um, do we have any questions or comments on the submission that we got? The sunken rear yard <laughs> seems a bit unusual. Uh, I would have to agree with that. Uh, I think uh, it's a, was it eight feet or nine feet down? And it didn't appear that there was, at least the plan didn't actually show that there was access from the cellar to that area, but from the outside. Um, but in any case, I would, um, I would question sort of the use of the, the rear as having um, that depressed area back there. Mm -hmm. And I, I also wonder if they have to conduct a phase two analysis. I know you had questions about the use in the cellar and sort of the, that vestibule that appears kind of at the entry. The vestibule, you mean inside? Yeah. I think that's, the vestibule is for access to the cellar only for the unit that's on the second and third floor. I understand that the primary owner of the building wants to utilize the cellar and the rear yard, but I just, especially the rear yard, I just hope that there's some other way to access that portion without having to have the sunken portion in the rear. Agreed. Commissioner Hoppe Brown? Um, I had raised uh, questions about the uniqueness study and it was redone, and I would have to say it was definitely improved upon. There was a narrative that explained the reasons for the conclusions of the vacant sites being used in conjunction with their adjacent property. And so I, I actually was fine with that and I was then convinced that this is a unique case. Um, the financials, I raised a question about the income for the main unit and I had felt that it was rather low considering the size of the unit and the fact that it had additional space that could be attributed to it that would add value, and they did come back and adjust the rents upwards to accommodate that, so I was fine. Good. Do we have anything else? Good. Next. Item number 33, 188.13BZ and 189.13H, 20 day of court, Staten Island. Now this has been adjourned. Mm -hmm. Item number 34, 193.13BZ, 4770 White Plains Road, The Bronx. This item has been adjourned as well. Item number 35, 225, 13BZ, 810 Kent Avenue, Brooklyn. And this item is adjourned. Item number 36, 254, 13BZ, 2881 Nostrand Avenue, Brooklyn. Adjourned. Adjourned. 
Item number 37, 265 13BZ, 11827 Farmers Boulevard, Queens. So at our last hearing, um, we asked for clarification of the relationship between Trinity LLC as the developer and uh, Presbyterian Church of St. Albans, and the applicant supplied us with a transfer agreement between the parties referring, transferring the rights of the, of the project to, to the church. Um, the applicant also provided a re revised DOB objection sheet with corrected zoning citations and um, a landscaping plan for the lot, including the parking. Um, as well as a parking demand analysis supporting their request. Uh, we also received additional financials in support of the feasibility uh, necessity for the 67 units. Do we have any questions or comments about the latest submission? I had a question about the parking demand study. I know they used um, information from a certain census tract for the modal split information, but they show 31% of those residents commuting by subway and I don't believe that there's a subway in this vicinity so I was wondering how you handle that information in lieu of the immediate area and um, I don't really have a good idea of what transportation alternatives are available I think I had mentioned that last time but I didn't see that information and um, I was wondering if they had data on car ownership in this area because I'm not sure that the parking demand study adequately represents what the actual demand will be. I understand there's a lot of parking available on the side streets, but I just would like to get a good idea of what the demand will be for this project. Understood. Commissioner Ottenbrand? Um, I looked at the financials and I thought they very clearly showed why an as of right project on this oddly shaped site would not work because you would only be able to have 11 two family homes versus the 16 on a typical rectangular site. So the loss of the five homes definitely would lead to not being able to get a return on the property. Good. Anything further? Next. Okay, item number 38, 283 13BZ, 4930 20th Avenue, Brooklyn. And we have an adjournment request on this as well. Item number 39, 294 13BZ, 220 Lafayette Street, Manhattan. So at our last hearing, um, we had questions concerning the uniqueness study uh, based on the obsolescence of the site in regards to its functionality and the floors um, for manufacturing and the applicant submitted materials concerning that obsolescence, um, as well as financial materials that indicate a, a lesser variance um, was not necessarily acceptable um, because we had concerns about sort of the rear yard and, um, and asked that the applicant look at uh, having a more generous rear yard. Uh, do we have questions about that? I think that the, the uh, applicant has come back to us with um, a solution of maintaining that 28 feet 3 inch rear yard um, while adding some square footage at the top of the building. It seemed a, a reasonable um, request and was supportable um, with the financials. I don't know what you guys feel. It would be okay with me. It's reasonable. Commissioner Brown? Yes. I, they made the corrections to the financials that I requested. Great. Okay. Item number 40, 328 13BZ, 8 Berry Street, Brooklyn. So we got um, revised parking calculations um, for the building um, at uh, 44 spaces with the PC requiring 31 of those spaces um, with 13 spaces for the remaining use group 6. Uh, I had concerns though about this application still because the applicant is utilizing a portion of the lot um, for a PCE use um, without benefit of a permit and hasn't really um, explained that um, they're either including that portion into this application or they're sort of asking that we not necessarily look at it. And it's troubling to me because I think that the solution really would be to include that portion that they're using currently in what they're asking for for the future and then come back to us and, and perhaps it could be a, sort of as simple as a letter stating that when they cease to use the current space that um, the, uh, the floor area um, square footage would be diminished by a certain amount. Um, but I, I'm concerned that they're utilizing a space that uh, 
for, for a PC that is not under a permit. Right, the portion that they're uh, <coughs> located in currently, I believe, is going to be demolished. Correct. So, you know, it's kind of unusual. Of a unusual request. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, to me, it should be actually in. I think that we should be reviewing it because it is in the same zoning lot, and we should have some sort of architectural plan so at least we can see what the space actually looks like, like see if it's actually safe. Um, it would be helpful. Good. I agree. Item number 41, 5-14BZ, 1807 East 22nd Street, Brooklyn. And we have an adjournment on this as well. Adjournment request? Yes. Yeah. Yes? No? I believe so, yes. Right? I do. Are we adjourning to the second Okay. Okay. Yes, we are adjourning this. Okay. New cases, item number 42, 222-13BZ, 2472 Coney Island Avenue, Brooklyn. So the applicant is requesting a reduction in parking under 7344 um, for a 10,246 um, square foot ambulatory diagnostic treatment center that otherwise would require 34 spaces and with a reduction to 17 spaces. Um, total parking on the lot encompassing all the uses is 43. Um, this site is it's interesting it's it's a split lot so we've got a C81 and an R5 um, zoning district split um, I don't know about uh, my other fellow commissioners but I I found that I had several questions and papers were very confusing to me um, I think they were inconsistent and it wasn't exactly clear as to the grandfathering of the parking in the residential um, I believe that, that there may be evidence to that, but that has not um, been put before us, and I think the applicant needs to take a look at that. But um, it, his papers were just really not clear to me exactly what use groups they were looking for, and um, I, I don't know whether anybody else had that, that problem, but uh, I certainly did. Well, um, I can absolutely agree with you. I think that this application was incomplete. I mean, we're talking about a, a parking reduction, and like you said, we aren't even clear as to what the actual uses are, aside from the ambulatory care facility. On one page, it says car sales. On the other page, it says car rental. So, I, and I'm not even sure what the parking demand is for either one of them. Is it the same or is it different? Um, usually, we see a traffic study and a parking demand study that would let us know whether or not the parking could be accommodated on the street. Um, Let's see what else, and there are many <laughs> other issues. Um, they it's a talk long about, list. you know, being located on Coney Island Avenue and having curb cuts on Coney Island Avenue, and that that would be the primary entry. Then they have curb cuts also on East 9th Street, which is the residential street, and I'm not even sure why you would need them if everybody's going to be entering and exiting on Coney Island Avenue. You don't have a lighting plan that shows where the lighting is and how it's going to affect the residential. We don't have hours of operation for the parking lot. Um, like you said, part of this property is in an R5 zone, and we're not even sure at this point whether or not that actually can accommodate the parking without a, a waiver of some sort. Um, he's removing trees on the residential street without any explanation as to why he's removing those streets. And I'm not even sure about the entire boundary of the zoning lot. It seems as if there's some sort of vacant land that abuts Avenue mm -hmm. B. I'm not sure what it's going to be developed for. He doesn't really address it. But certainly, he should address whether or not it could be used for the shortfall of parking because it is vacant. So there are a lot of questions here. A lot of questions. Commissioner <laughs> There are more. I would like to know what they presented to the Department of Buildings in terms of parking in order to get approved plans because they've kind of already built the structure. Um, I would like to see what the pre-existing plans are because what they've submitted to us as existing is actually what's there. You know, I, I would like to see what was there before. Um, has this site had a prior, have a prior BSA action attached to it? And just the entrance and exit for the cars doesn't seem to be wide enough mm -hmm. for this mm -hmm. to work, you know. It's not in terms of, I think it's maybe 15 feet wide and it's an attendant 
area where they have to get in the car and get out of the car, and it doesn't seem like it would work to me. I, I agree. There are a lot of questions here, and I think the, um, the applicant really needs to take a look at his papers and um, come back to us with a cogent set of papers that we can all look at um, in, in a proper manner. So they should take note. Item 43, 4814BZ, 174 Falmouth Street, Brooklyn. Uh, questions or comments on this? Um, they recently came back with um, saying that they don't own the four-foot easement at the rear, but um, that means that they have to readjust all their floor area calculations, and it will be over one, so it should, they should reduce some of their square footage in the building. Um, the, to me, the balconies at the front appear to be countable as floor area in terms of Great. them being roofed, and uh, I would like them to discuss that a little further. They don't seem to be any landscaping um, compliance, and it's 50% on this lot this size. And um, they did come with a recent submission explained that they're going to comply with Appendix G, but I would still like to see it on the plans. Agreed. Absolutely. Um, Commissioner Alfie Brown, did you have? I have no idea. <coughs> I just um, would like them perhaps to address the, um, the pool on, on grade in a flood zone. Um, I'm not clear whether or not that would be actually permitted, um, and if they could talk to talk about that. I would think, just intuitively, that if you're in a flood zone and you've got a pool with eight to ten feet of water in it, that um, that might contribute to <laughs> further a further problem with flooding. So um, if they could speak to that, that would be very good. Next. Item number 44, 50-14BZ, 825 Manhattan Avenue, Brooklyn. Uh, any questions, comments on the PCE? Crunch fitness. Next. Final one, 45, 52, 14 BZ, 1339 East 28th Street, Brooklyn. Uh, existing single family um, for a special permit. Uh, any questions or comments? And this one also, they have to show landscaping compliance. And I know there's a school to the rear. I was just wondering if how far that school building is off the lot line. It appeared to me when I went through that it was very close. Uh, did they show that there's a garage adjacent to this, or? Yes, there's also a garage in the rear yard. They're saying that there's three feet between the garage and the home. Okay, all right, so you just need clarification as to whether the school mm -hmm. property actually abuts this. Right. Okay, great. This concludes the August 18th review session.